Hi, I'm Eric Sue, and I'm a researcher at the Hawk EU Center, Jean Monnet Center of Excellence at the University of South Australia. I'm here for the launch of the Cooperative Connected Automated Mobilities Research Network uh, here in Munich, Germany. Um, the purpose of the network, which is being funded by the European Commission Jean Monnet Network Program, um, is to um, address the grand theoretical challenges of conceptualizing automated mobilities. We're really interested in the future of automated transport um, and other forms of mobility. Here are some of the reflections and perspectives that we've generated in the first workshop event, uh, which we hope will stimulate discussion uh, and understanding of this very important topic. Well, I think what is what is one of the, the, the key points in that discussion is actually um, what are the unintended consequences of this transformation. So, um, if we are um, more into automatic mobility systems, um, what is the impact on social life? How is that transforming the social life in the city? Um, and how do these technical systems interact and um, also transform public space? Um, the other question is, um, the, um, the whole character of mobility is getting, getting changed through that. So um, right now mobility is, has a lot to do with freedom, has a lot to do with individual decisions. Um, so people are actually in the future going to be much more into a large-scale technical system and they experience it as a, being in a large-scale technical system. And um, they need to find a new way of using the time in this public space or in this private space um, within the car. Um, and um, it's going to be a space where people are connected to a lot of other places. So a lot of social spaces are coming together in this um, bubble where people are moving around. Okay, so my take on all this and my vantage point is customer relationships and, and what we see happening now in uh, cities and customers relationships to cities and within cities is, is in fact a lot of experimentations. So customers are continuously trying new ways of living and leading their day-to-day -day life in, in our cities and of course that has implications for mobility as well. I think Helsinki is a good example, looking at what's happening in the beautiful Helsinki, city of Helsinki as we speak. You have everything from uh, street parties to saunas built by activists to uh, Facebook groups to whatnot. So that's sort of happening on the, on the micro level in our cities. And meanwhile, of course, on the macro level, we have all the uh, things associated with planning, with regulatory activities, with city strategies for be it mobility or be it something else. And I think what's really interesting is what hap what's happening with, with, uh, in the intersection of these two forces. So the city's capability to sort of function as platforms for, for individuals and, and communities to experiment versus the policy and planning driven activities on, for instance, mobility. I think that's the key issue that we need to look into in more depth. How will the individual consumer react to new ways of transport, new ways of mobility? How and when will they take on new technologies, new means of transportation? Because if the customer isn't on board, then this will not work. Very much missing in the debate about automated transport is that this actually have an impact on people, it has an impact on the cities. I think there is a big tendency to just talk about the technology and all the opportunities there is with the technology and instead of turning it around and actually talk about the city and the people living in the city and how automation could be used by them. I think the key question is basically to get out of this technological fallacy as it's called within my research field but this thing that the technology drives everything and instead taking a good look at how people are actually the ones driving these things technologies are never better than the way they're used um, big cities don't make their reputation or get 
a lot of companies to invest in them based on how uh, functional, efficiently functional it is, but also very much based on what kind of city it is and if it's a city people want to live in. We shouldn't underestimate the power of livability in the international city competition. And sometimes transport kind of forget how to actually create that, and that's not just about efficiency.